Hi guys, many of you are interested in the topic of API testing. In this short course, we will create a small collection of requests using the Postman tool. And the most important thing is that we automate it. We will test the API of this service. Here you can clearly see that requests need to be sent and that responses should come. The testing process will take place automatically without our participation and as much as we want. This will be a very useful video in the piggy bank of your skills. Therefore, I advise you to subscribe to the channel so as not to lose it. We go to the site Postman and download it. All links will be in the description of this video. Postman will automatically offer the version suitable for your operating system. Click and download. Install Postman as a regular program. Agree everyone and run. We create a new collection and here we will send the first request. Just repeat my steps. Now we go to the site with the API that you have already seen. There is all the API and information we need. Copy the base URL and paste into the request field. We send a request and what do we see? We see a response with a 403 code. This code tells us what we do not have rights. Let's go look at the documents. It says here that we have to register. I'll go through my Google account. We see that the code we need has appeared. We will return to it later. And now copy this and go to Postman. We paste and they also paste the code. Sending a request again. Access rights appeared, but the path was not found. Go to the documentation again. We need to add the exact URL. Go to user tab. Copy the path to the user, paste and send the request. We see that the response came with code 200. We also see a whole page of users, which means that we have set everything up correctly. Our key is working and the data from the API comes to us in the postman. In the next lesson we will create a collection of requests using different methods. We will create a user, a post and a comment on the post. Watch the next video and subscribe to the channel. Whoever watched it up to this point is a great fellow. I suggest pausing the video and going to make yourself some tea or coffee. You have already done a good job and the most interesting things are ahead. Remember, 
When you watch this video to the end, you will be able to say to automate testing using Postman. Hi guys, this is the second tutorial on API testing with Postman. In the last video we downloaded and installed Postman, which is an API testing tool. We also installed a key in Postman and got a list of users using the get methods. In this lesson we will continue. We will create a collection of requests using the get, post, put and delete methods. Ok, let's start right now. Copying our previous request. Let's also rename our first query. Now copy the first query and paste it into the second. With the first request we check the authorization and the second one we will execute by disabling authorization. Sending a request with disabled authorization. That's right, we received a request with a 403 code. Let's swap it, it's more logical. And rename. Now we go to the documentation and read about pugination. This is how many users will be on one page. We see other data here as well as a ready request. Copy the URL and prepare for the third request. We see that we have values in the parameters tab and this is very convenient because they can be easily edited, for example. We send this request and get a page with 10 records. Do not forget to save our requests. Where there are orange dots, the request is not saved there. Let's try to change the value in the parameters. Let's go to the documentation and see. Yes, we see that the value can be from 5 to 50. Sending a request. Yes. Now there are 20 objects on the page. Return the previous value. And now we will move on to the interesting. We will create a new user using the post method. As usual, go to the tab with user data, copy the desired address into the URL and paste into a new request. Repeat after me.
and very important, do not forget to change the methods. Rename the query. Then we will return to the conditions and we will see that the request to create a user must contain first name, last name and email. Therefore, we go to the model and look at how the request body shall look to create a user. Copy it. It's a JSON format, JavaScript object notation. Go to the body tab and repeat after me. Next, we will remove all unnecessary lines and leave only those without which the user will not be created. Now it looks more like JSON format. Let's create data for our user. Email can also be. Send a request and see an error. I missed a comma. Success! Our user has been created. We see that a user has been created with our data and it has an ID. Save our request. Again we go to the documentation and see that the user can be updated. Let's copy the previous request again, change the method to put and paste the ID of our newly created user into the request. Note that we can change everything except email. Ok, let's do that. The put method change information in already created objects. Change some data and 
add new ones. Remember which user was in the last request. Save and send a new request. You see an updated user. He already has new data. Let's see what else can be done with the user. For example, we can check if the updated user is really available by this ID. Copy the request, change the methods, rename the request in the collection. We send a request, code to 100, yes, it works. Putting things in order with the names of queries. Let's go to the post category. First, we will create a post for our user. Then we will check that it exists and display the list. Let's start as usual. Copy the previous request, rename it and change the URL. As with creating a user, we must send data in a body of the request. Copy the request body from the models. We bring the data in the request to the form of JSON format. We use hints and come up with some data.
and we will take the current link in the data that was sent to us. Let's put 100 likes. In the last paragraph we will insert our user ID. We remember that you need to create objects using the POST method. We send a request and again something is run. I probably forgot to put a comma again. And again something is missing. I miss the URL. We send a request and see our user with a post who also has his own ID. We save and with the next request we will check whether this post is really in the system. We go to the documentation and copy the data we need for it new request. Rename the query name in the collection. We will check the user by POST ID. Insert the post ID taken from the previous request. Successful answer came. OK. Now let's check if our post is in the general list of posts. We do the usual actions to copy the information we need. 
and create a new request that will check if our post is in the general list of posts. Great, we see that our post is in the general list of posts. We will now create a comment on our posts and get closer to completing our collection. Then you can start automating it. So we create a comment, we repeat the same actions that we did, then we created the user and the post. Information in the body is also taken from the models. Fill in the body data. Insert user ID here. and paste the post ID here. Send a request and see that we have created a comment on our user's post. And this comment also has its own ID.
next we will check if this comment exists. So we create a new request. Let's use this query. A lot of time was spent on creating the video. So I will ask you to show any activity that is convenient for you. It can be a like, any comment and a subscription is even more chic. I assure you that the most interesting is a hat, then this collection will be executed automatically without our participation. Done. The comment is really there. In our collection we have not yet used the delete method. Let's do it. I suggest you delete this comment. That's it, there is no our command. In the next check we will make sure of this. We should receive an empty answer without data. Now we will check after deleting the command. Repeat after me as always. You see that the fields came empty, the comment was successfully removed and we are nearing completion. And now let's remove our user from the system. We act in the same way as which deleting a comment.
we see an already familiar situation. It was the same with the commentary. We have deleted the user. And we come to our last request in this collection. Now we will very quickly check whether our user has really retired. Here you see that the resource was not found, so everything went fine. The user has indeed been deleted and I want to congratulate you on that, that you have created a small but complete collection. Like, comment or subscribe and move on the next video. We will automate this collection. My sincerest respect to you if you have made it this far. I want to share statistics, like you are less than 10%. With such determination, you will definitely achieve success. Hi guys. Today will be an interesting lesson. In the previous lesson we set up Postman and created a collection of API requests. We send them manually. In this lesson you will see how variables work and how you can automate the testing process. Let's continue. Here in this part you can create different Postman environments. Each environment can have a set of variables that will only work for a particular area. It is very comfortable. The tester can create his own area with his own variables to work with. And the developer can create an area with data that only he uses. Variables in the global part will work for everyone. For each environment you can make your own settings. Go to the test tab. Here we will write our script. If we look at our requests we will see static data in the URL and we will change them to variables. This must be done so that each time you do not change it manually. Here on the right there are snippets. These are already ready-made solutions. Let's choose some. An expression has been created. Here we will enter our key and value and see how it works. Let's also go to the body and change the email. We also change it manually. We send a request and see that this data appeared in the MyQA environment. And now we order to automatically take data from the response and use it. We will add two lines of code. 
Repeat after me. We no longer need this line. We change email again, send a request and see that our is available in the environment. From where we will take it the substitute it into the static data that we say in the requests. Let's delete this line as well remains from the last check. Close unnecessary tabs. Copy these two lines and go to post creation. Before sending the request, do not forget to change the email again. Now we take the value of the new ID and insert the owner of the post into the field. Send request and success. You can see that the new post ID has appeared in the environment as well. Copy the code and go to create a comment. And in the body of the comment, you need to insert two new ID.
we execute the request and see one more variable we need in the environment. And now we need to replace all the values that we insert manually. We need to change them to variables. Repeat after me and you will understand. Replace and save. Here we also select the variable we need and insert it. Now we know it will be substitute automatically. We do the same here. This request was copied from the past, so the body is not needed here. Same, this request was also copied from the past, so the body is not needed here. It remains to change quite a bit of static data. So, let's try to send a request.
we see an error because there was no need to change the query here. Let's return it. Everything is now working as it should. Let's move on. Let's add a test code to each request. Let's do it with a snippet. This is how the script for checking the response code 200 looks like. Copy it and paste it into every request. Here we send the request and in this tab we see that we were waiting for code 200 and it came. So the test passed. But in this request the normal code is 403 because the first request is a request without authorization. Change the value and repeat the test. Great! The test passed. Let's check all the other tests. And here there was a problem, the code should be 200. The body shouldn't be here because it's a get method.
it's all right now. Let's move on. You remember that in the last request we checked if the user was deleted. The deletion was successful, so we can't find it and see the 404 code. Let's continue. Now we'll go into the snippets and add some more of them to make the testing of the collection complete. Let's choose this. We will check if there is an ID in the response. We know that when we send this request, the response will be ID. And we see that it is true and two tests passed. Let's check if there is another value in the answer. We see that the tests fail. One test failed because we did not change the email and the second test failed because there is no such value in the response. Let's add another interesting test, but in a different query. We will check for header. We see that there is such header and two tests were successful. If we change the values, then the test will fail. We will also add another test that checks the response time. Send the request and see the response time. Let's choose this snippet. And if we send a request, then the test will fall because the time in the snippet is less than the response time. We click on the collection and on the run button 
we see the entire collection. Here we can increase the number of collection runs. Let's run the collection and see how it runs. We see that the execution has stopped. And I know the reason. We forgot to change email. But we don't want to constantly change the email manually. So repeat after me. Now we order so that random values are automatically substituted. Enter the values that we want to change randomly. And we start our collection again. We see that the last test did not pass. Let's see. Error 404. Let's go to the test and submit the request. We see that the server sent a 400 error this time. The server decided that this response better described the file not found situation. OK. Now the test result is displayed correctly. Let's launch the collection again. And I can congratulate you. Everything worked out. Let me remind you that we can easily fix this error and left it just to look at. You can export the collection we created and send it to your colleagues, for example. You can also run the collection many times and set a time interval between tests. See how beautiful it looks. It's time to like this video, write a comment and subscribe to the channel. So, in these three tutorials we've hooked up a postman, created a logical collection, create some tests for that collection, introduced variables and automated that collection. Now the testing process can take place without our participation. 
we will only watch the results. Put like. Bye guys.